What's up, guys? I'm Chris Spaggs here, back with another Four Corners video for today's 10-game MLB slate, courtesy of Osmo.com. I'm going to make some tweaks to the video today in the hopes of making this a little more productive to help you guys build lineups. Obviously, MLB a little bit different of a sport than NBA, so we need to approach it a little bit more in mind with that. So like this video right now, comment any feedback you have down below, or your favorite one-off hitter. Either way, I love going down there, hearing from you guys, hearing your thoughts. So like the video right now and give me a comment with any feedback or any thoughts about your favorite one-off hitter down below. The first corner I'm going to hit on today is our top pitcher options on the slate. First guy up is Chris Sale. Chris Sale is going to be a top-owned player industry-wide. 61% on DraftKings, 47% on FanDuel, 55% on Yahoo. Right now, he has 3.2 implied runs against him with Detroit going for a 25.6% K rate versus left-hand pitching. There's some concern for Sale to start the year. He's had only 7 Ks per nine and a 1.56 whip so far in 2019, but he's very due for positive regression and at a reasonable price. There is some risk here with the rain. I would watch out for the weather status as we get there closer to lock, but for now, we're going to assume Sale is in there, and if you are going to play the lineups as they are right now, I would say that Sale's a guy you're going to want to at least match the field on because he's just due for positive regression, and again, the price is really hard to ignore. Joe Musgrove is currently not a weather risk, and he projects for much less ownership than Sale, but he's still in a good spot here going against Arizona, which is 3.5 implied runs against. He's got a 13.3% swinging strike rate and a 35.6% chase rate so far in 2019. Arizona also striking out a 24.7% rate, so it's a good spot here versus Musgrove. I think he's a guy who's going to be a little bit overlooked, especially if Sale's in there. So Musgrove, to me, is a guy really to consider whether Sale is in or whether Sale is out. Yanni Chirinos will also be a decently owned option because we know that he's getting the start today. He's not going to be the long reliever. He's going to be getting a full run. He's been good in that spot here versus Kansas City today as well. He gets 3.2 implied runs. He's at 8.8 Ks per nine when he's given the opportunity. So Chirinos looks pretty solid, reasonably priced as well. And you know he's probably going to get closer to five innings or so in this game, which is a good outlay for him. It's a good spot for Chirinos, and I have no problem going with him versus the Royals. Now on to our next corner of the top stacks for the day. The Rockies are going to be one of the better at looking options on the slate, as well as one of the higher owned ones. They're going against Jeremy Hellickson, who has 5.8 implied runs against him on the slate. Hellickson's 3.8% swinging strike rate in 2019 is the lowest on the slate. And there's a ton of danger here if he can't miss bats versus a Colorado lineup. who's slowly creeping out of the basement with some poor numbers to start the year versus right-hand pitching. They're getting healthier. They look better. Hellickson doesn't miss bats. It's a good spot here to go against Hellickson and Coors. If he does have a good day here, it's really an unexpected situation. So I'm okay going to lots of Rockies today. On the other side of the Coors equation, we have a national stat going against Tyler Anderson. They have 5.2 implied runs in their favor, and they've had a 279 batting average versus left-hand pitching so far in 2019. They strike out a lot at 27.6%, but they're hitting well, and Anderson really isn't missing bats with an 8.4% swinging strike rate. Guys like Ryan Zimmerman, Jan Gones, and Brian Dozier are also not meaningfully priced up for Coors, but again, Anderson's allowing hits everywhere, 18 hits per nine so far to start the year. So Anderson may be due for some positive regression, but the Nationals overall look pretty good to me, and if those guys in the middle order are going to be underpriced, they could be an interesting play to have. And rounding out our top sacks for the day, another team was implied for a bunch of runs. Yeah, Astros going against Jake Odorizzi, getting 5.5 implied runs in their favor from Vegas. They're a lower owned option than the Coors teams, and there is some risk with Odorizzi. He's been striking out 11.1 per nine with a 14.3% swinging strike rate in 2019. Generally, he's been a worse pitcher on the road than at home, so it could be a spot here where maybe he's not going to be as good playing in the Astros stadium, but the situation here does mean some risk for the Astros. I still like going to them. I like going to where the field is right now. They're going to be under 20% owned collectively. I think that's fine. Odorizzi posing some risk, but again, he can just get shelled. He does get shelled often, and this Astros team is about as good of a hitting group as you'll find on today's slate. The next corner I want to hit on are some of the lower owned options out there. Again, these guys probably have a little more risk because the field's not going to be on them as much. There's some reasons usually why people aren't going to guys en masse, but one of the guys I'm going to talk about today who comes with an obvious amount of risk, Chris Bassett. He's projected for just 3.8 implied runs versus Texas. He reportedly can throw between 90 and 95 pitches after being called up, was in the mid-70s down in the minors before. He doesn't have great stuff, just a 6.8% swinging strike rate dating back to last year, but Oakland being at home helps that Park is going to benefit him as a pitcher. It's not a bad spot here going against Texas, who's not as potent away from home. So I don't mind going to Bassett here at a little bit of volume, not a guy to load up on, but to differentiate some lineups and get a cheap pitcher in there who has maybe a degree of upside. I don't think Bassett's a terrible play. A little bit less flimsy than Bassett is a card stat going against Adrian Hauser. The Cardinals get 4.8 implied runs in their favor, and they've had a 363 on base percentage and a 207 ISO so far this year versus right hand pitching. Hauser is called up for the minors, and he's been hit hard by Reddies in particular, dating back to last year, limited sample size. But guys like Goldschmidt, DeJong, and Ozuna. They're a pricey pivot, but they are a pivot to some of the other stacks out there. These guys can do damage versus Hauser. They're pretty high priced, so they're not going to be terribly highly owned. So I don't mind going to some spins on the Cardinal stack here in hopes that you're differentiating your lineup from some of the higher owned options like Coors or the Astros. If the weather looks okay for the game between the Red Sox and the Tigers, Chris Sale might not be the only viable pitching option there. Matthew Boyd's a bit overpriced, but he's been really good so far this year. He has 4.8 implied runs against him, which doesn't bode well.
well. But he does have a 16.1% swinging strike rate so far in 2019. Also striking out guys at a 13.3K per nine rate, which is incredibly high. Boyd may be due for some negative regression, and the Vegas total does seem to support that. But people aren't going to get to him a lot, and he has shown some upside here. So I don't mind going to a little bit of Boyd in the hopes that he's a differentiating play. An A stack versus Mike Miner isn't totally off the radar, but it is a lower owned option than some of these other ones out there. Mike Miner has started well, but he's due for some negative regression. Gets 4.8 implied runs against him here in this matchup with Oakland. There's going to be ownership on guys like Marcus Simeon, Matt Chapman, Stephen Piscotti, and Chris Davis, but it's nowhere near some of the other stacks we talked about. So going to Oakland today could be a viable pivot. And again, Vegas does support them with a decent run total. And for our last corner, we're going to hit on some of the better one-off options here. Some of them won't be surprising, including this first guy. Christian Yelich jumps off the page. He's hitting everything so far in 2019, a 456 on base percentage and a 506 ISO on the year. It's not a great run total here going against Jack Flaherty. And Jack Flaherty has been striking guys out pretty well with 11 Ks per nine so far this year. But Christian Yelich is on a whole other plane as a hitter, so I don't mind going him as a one-off. Even if the rest of the Brewers falter, you can still have Yelich have a big day. We talked about the national stack, but I do think Anthony Rendon is a guy worth singling out as a viable one-off play out of that grouping. Rendon is in his own class out of that team with a 371 batting average and a 400 ISO. Now he's playing in cores, which is only going to benefit a quality hitter like him who's just great at making contact and doing damage with contact. So Anthony Rendon could be a really strong play today in a way a lot of the other nationals perhaps aren't. The Chicago White Sox stack looks a bit overpriced, but Yoan Moncada seems like a guy who might be worth it. Going against David Hess is about as good as you can get for a guy who hits from the lefty side of the plate. Hess giving up a 6.9% home run rate versus lefty batters. Moncada has a 2.11 ISO versus right-hand pitching going back to last year. He's in a good spot here. I'm willing to pay a little bit more to get to him because I do think he's probably the best hitting option out of this White Sox group. And the Pirates' Cole Tucker interests me a little bit as a cheaper option at a tough position at shortstop. He had a really good start to his career here, a feel-good moment hitting a game-winning home run in his first game. But he's also had a reasonable price in a number two slot versus Zach Godley, who's a good pitcher, but not a great one. Cole Tucker, I think, is an interesting option. Again, just at a two-hole, at a cheap price, at shortstop. It all checks out for Cole Tucker, being a guy who continues momentum from the weekend, and hopefully have a decent day here versus Zach Godley. So there we go. Those are my thoughts on today's slate. And as I mentioned, it is a new format, trying to make this a little more relevant for people to help build baseball lineups more directly than the way we had to do for NBA. So please like the video right now and leave a comment down below giving me any feedback you have, as well as any thoughts today on any one-off hitters or stacks or pitchers, really any questions you have at all. You want me to pull up some data on, leave it down in the comments below. And of course, hit us with that like. And check the promo code Switch and Hedge. It'll give you half off your first month on any package at Osmo.com. All the ownership projections and rankings, and also just regular projections you can plug right into Fantasy Cruncher. All these data points are helpful for me as I do this video every morning. They'll be helpful for you as well as you're trying to build lineups and get ahead of the field in MLB. So use that promo code Switch and Hedge to get half off your first month of any package. Could also be an all sport package. You get a bunch of different sports, not just MLB. But go ahead, check that out with promo code Switch and Hedge. I'll be back again tomorrow with another Four Corners video. So hope this helps and good luck.